Joseph, you live in the great state of Texas, right? That's right, in El Paso. El Paso, Texas, baby. All right, so today we're going to break down Joseph's sales process and really what he's learned from NEPQ, being one of our clients, he's one of our advanced NEPQ 3.0 members. Okay, he's been in that program. How long have you been in that program with us, uh, Jose? Uh, I've been about three months. Okay, a little over Just 90 months. Yeah. And how did he go from making around three, 4,000 a month to now 25,000 plus a month in commissions and growing? Mm -hmm. Okay. How did he do that within, you're talking like within 90 days. All right. So we're going to break down his sales process. He's going to give you some hors d'oeuvres, some little nibbles that you can use, different tonality, different questions that you can really use for any industry. It doesn't matter. Um, and we're going to go for about the next 20, 12, 25 minutes. All right. Now, Joseph, what industry do you sell in? What space are you in? I do solar and home improvement door to door. Okay, so you sell you sell door to door, yeah. and you sell home improvement plus solar. Is it like together, or what does that mean? Yeah, I can sell roofing. I can sell windows, uh, filtration systems. Okay, just pretty much the whole nine yards. All right, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna break that down. Jose, is it better to make twenty five grand a month in commissions or three? <laughs> Um, I wouldn't say 30. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? You're probably at 30 next month. Now, all right, Jose, nobody cares about me on here. They only care about you. So walk us through you. How old are you? You look pretty young. I'm 30, about I'm to be 31. Old guy, man, you're really old. All right, so you're 30 <laughs> years old. Now, because I just met you about 10 minutes before we got on here. You said that you got out of college. Mm -hmm. And your first job was sales. Walk us through where your sales journey started real quick before we start getting into some of these questions. Yeah, so I, I was actually going, well, I graduated from business uh, marketing. Okay. And um, I don't know, I to me, I just clicked. I was like, I was, well, where I live, I was going to make like 30K, work like 12 hours a day. Okay. And I was like, maybe go to 40K in a couple of years. So okay. I was like, nope, that, that's why I got into sales. Okay, so you got into sales. What was your first sales job? You sold something over the phone, right? Uh, yeah, I, I sold uh, satellite TV services over the phone. Okay, so you sold satellite services over the phone. From what I understand, because I think you posted something in the Sales Revolution Facebook group, you got up to maybe around seven or 8000 a month. Was that where you're getting at? Yeah, about. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's not bad if you live in Texas, right? A little bit, cost of living is not so high as there. What caused you to, first of all, want to leave that sales job and to sell something different? What was the, the driving factor behind that? Um, I got stuck. And after I got stuck, I got bored. Okay. So, so you kind of got capped. Yeah. You didn't really go any higher with the, the skill sets you had at that point. So what caused you to like jump into solo over something else? Uh, mainly it was like, new industry and um from my old job a lot of people left before me okay. and they offered me jobs but i never did so okay so it you finally seemed... got into that job uh selling mm -hmm. door to door and from what i understand you posted you thought hey i think this is going to be easy i'm going to go make all this money but what was the reality well i mean i i thought i was going to do better than most because i i did sales for like seven years before it yeah um complete different game Okay. So a different game. So you got out there and from what I understand, you were only getting making about 3000 a month. So you got humbled pretty quickly, right? What, what do you think was the biggest cause of you only being able to make three grand a month? Cause a lot of times when people post, like we have thousands of these testimonies that people post all over the place, Facebook groups, uh, IG, all that kind of stuff about the results they get from the training. And you know what the first question is? Oh, well, what industry are they in? It must be the industry. Oh, they're making 350 grand a year. It must be the industry. But yet you were in an industry where we train a lot of people that make, you know, 300, 4, 500, 6, 700 grand plus a year, even more. But yet when you got into it, you're only making three grand. So what was the, what was the biggest difference you think in the beginning for you? I mean, I'd be lying if I haven't thought about how much I could be making at my old job if I had your training before. Sure. Yeah, you probably um, would have made triple. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as solar goes, I just 
I mean, I was using the same thing everyone was. Okay. That, that was the thing. Yeah, but it just wasn't working for you. All right. So what caused you besides like, hey, I'm not making very much money. I, you know, I'm making half less than half what I did at my old job. What first of all, how did you find this? What what happened? Well, since I was new to solar, I started following different guys that I knew were successful. Okay. I guess from there it you just popped up I somewhere around on a yeah. real day, all right? Yeah. Uh, so I popped up on a reel. You got into and you got into our advanced NEPQ 3.0. What caused you to be like, oh my gosh, I maybe I need to learn how to sell so I can make more money? What was your thought process of like putting money into sales training? To what was going on in your mind? I knew I had to learn from someone that was already doing better than me. Yeah. And uh, I had done a course before, but it was all videos. Okay. So that's why I jumped into the 3.0. Yeah, because it was just video. So with our advanced yeah. 3.0, you've got obviously the virtual training platform, which is like 34 hours in itself. But to really learn all the nuances, the ins and outs of that, you have to have group training to learn the tonality, to learn like, oh, if they say this, you're going to ask this, right? The ins and outs are taught that for any industry. Okay. Now, what was the your first 30 days? What did you start picking up from the virtual training course plus the group training? that started to like, you started to like, oh, okay, this is what I'm doing wrong. The first 30 days, it felt like I wasn't picking up anything because I was pretty much going through your, uh, through the portal. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was applying things out at the doors, okay. but I didn't see any, any true like change. Okay. Well, what happened after that? It just started clicking. Uh, so I would, 30 days to register. Yeah, I, I would listen to you you and like before I went to bed, I'm like in the car, the gym. So I guess okay. so it started to sink yeah. in. You're like, oh, okay, this is what I'm doing wrong. Uh, what, what was like one big thing that you started learning like at that 30 day mark that really like the aha moment that just flipped the, the gear for you into like, oh, now you're just starting to make sales now. Because sometimes it takes some people a little bit longer. We have some salespeople in every industry, like the second day, they're like, boom, out of the gate, making more sales. And then others, it could take a month or two sometimes before it really registers with them. What what was one big thing that really stood out for you? I think um, I could have done it a lot faster, but I had to stop doing what just naturally came to me because I mean, I had like the whole background in sales. Mm. So you were, okay, so your problem was you were still using a lot of your old techniques and you were, what were you trying to mix in some of ours with that? Or what were you trying to do? I, I was going all over the place. I was trying to mix my old techniques with the new techniques I was learning from my new office and then from you. So okay. was, you're kind of, you're all, you were kind of winging it basically. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's talk about your results. So your first month, you pretty much stayed the same thing. You didn't really pick up a ton because you were still trying to learn it. What happened the second month? How did your prospects start to start treating you differently than they did before with your old train? I was managing to, uh, I mean, because at the door, you only have like 10 seconds. It's, But I was managing to stay with them for like five minutes, 10 minutes. They would come out of their house and talk to me. Okay. I wasn't really being persuasive, but I, I was talking to them longer. Okay, so you st you started getting that you started to make more money, but basically what you started to do is you started to learn how to disarm them. Is mm -hmm. what happened. You started to get them to let their guard down where they wanted to engage, but then you didn't know what to do at that point. Yeah. But then you started learning that aspect of NEPQ from our virtual training and group training, and what happened? I thought I was lucky because I I would just start getting like, okay, you can stop by next week, and then. I would run credit, get them to sign up and everything and just like easy process. Okay. So let's talk about some of your, your questions. Cause like I said, you went from three grand a month to now last month over 25 grand in one month. And now you're on pace to make even more than that. And as you keep going through 3.0, you're just going to make more and more every month because you've only been in the program three and a half months. It's pretty much impossible to know everything at that point. It just, it just takes, these are advanced skills that require you you know, putting the time in to learn them and your income keeps going up every month. Uh, we have people in your industry that, you know, as you know, make four or five times that per month now, but they didn't three months in. It's gradually, they kept going up. 
Let's talk about your connecting. Let's talk about when you knock on the door. Let's talk about your door approach because it's a little bit different. You don't really, you ask a form of connecting questions that we teach in our virtual training platform, but it's a little bit different on the doors than if you're, you know, connecting questions with an inbound lead that books on your calendar or somebody you call like an outbound lead, or if you cold call, if you're in B2B or you're in a, a boardroom with a group of decision makers, those connecting questions all vary and we tweak them depending on the industry B2C or B2B. But how do you begin your door approach now? What do you actually say? How do you stand? How's it different now than what it was before? Oh, man. Um, when I started, I would carry a backpack with like everything in there. I would, okay. yeah, that would just, <laughs> I would get tired faster and that really didn't help. Now I, I just wear like, uh, I do wear like long sleeve, like that's what I'm wearing right now, but it's yeah. kind of like the shirts that the installers wear. Okay. So, so you, so you look less like a salesperson is what you're trying to suggest. A lot less. Yeah. Okay. So you look like more like a technician. So, you know, especially with door to door. Uh, you know, I was even on the on a, one of our advanced inner circle trainings uh, with our advanced uh, members in inner circle today. And I was talking to a lady that sells like holistic animal care, like not like a veterinarian, but like preventative stuff. And she's a doctor. And I had reviewed one of her calls and she was basically like wearing really nice clothes. And I'm like, hey, for your calls, I want you to start wearing scrubs like you're a doctor. Now, why would I tell her to do that when she's on Zoom and they can see her? Because if she has scrubs on or like even like her doctor apparel, like the white coat, people have less sales resistance when they don't think you're a salesperson, right? So when I started knocking on the doors, you know, my company, when I had my first sales job 21 years ago, we would wear, you know, they'd wear like nice watches and gold chains and like cool shoes and stuff like that. And I, I found out very quickly when they think you're a salesperson, they're very shut off. But then I started wearing like a construction vest, like an orange one or like a lime green one. I put on like a tape measure on my side, khaki shorts, very boring, polo shirt, very boring, cheap $10 watch from Walmart, very boring. Uh, old man, you know, new balance white shoes that you see like 75 year old grandpas wear. All right. Had it like a, um, you know, like a, a clipboard looked like I was reading a meter and that right there, there was no resistance when they came out. Cause like you said, they thought you were like a meter reader or a construction worker. Like they're not trying to sell me something. So that alone, little things like that, especially when you're going door to door, make a big difference. But I'm asking you like, what do you say? What do you say? What did you used to say when they opened the door? You would say what in your old sales techniques? Oh man, I would say a lot of I, 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 we. Well, just tell, was, me, tell me what you'd <laughs> say. Like, give me, give me word for word. I know it's painful sometimes, but what would you say? Um, it would be like, uh, you know, hi, uh, my name is Jose Martinez. I work for this company and we do this, this, and that. Yeah. Uh, if I can show you this, uh, what would but, they typically do in the first 20 seconds? Uh, pretty much say they're not interested if they were nice, <laughs> yeah. not interested. Boom. Now, what, how is it different now? What are you saying now? What are you asking that's triggering engagement? So right at the beginning, I lean a lot on a neighbor. Uh, so they see me kind of looking like a, like if I was working at a house or something. So if I say, uh, do you happen to know your neighbor? I don't know, Sophia. Yeah. And, and they're like, uh, no, when they kind of want to know what's going on. Okay. Yeah. And another thing you can do, uh, I'll just kind of help you with this is like when they knock on the door, you want to be at an angle with in door to door, right? Cause like I said, we train B2C, B2B and door to door. I know all these like the back of my hand. So you want to be at an angle to the side, like maybe four or five feet off the door. So you're not like right up in their space like this. Okay. It's an aggressive move. And with, with what you're selling, like solar, roofing, whatever, you're probably going to be looking up at the roof. Like, if, do you have like a clipboard? I carry like uh, my iPad. It's, okay, it's close. So it's, too, yeah. but you want to have like a little iPad thing that you can, like a little pin that you can write on. Do you mm -hmm. have that? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I have it right here. I'll show you like it's all enclosed. With the pen. Yeah, so perfect. So you want to act like you're like looking up at the roof. Because solar roofing, right? So you're looking up at the roof and they come to the door and like, yeah, how can I help you? Yeah, are you guys the um, are are you guys the the homeowners here? Yeah, we're the homeowners. Just that, then you can go into what you're doing. 
But if you do that, typically it triggers curiosity. Now notice I don't go, yeah, are you guys the homeowners here? Don't say it fast. You want to stay slow down like you're confused. So you want to stand there to the side, looking at the roof, and they come to the door and they open it. Hello, how can I help you? Yeah, are you guys the, um, are you the, the homeowners here? Yeah, we're the homeowners. Just automatically triggers curiosity. Okay? That's one little thing I'm going to show you today, all right? Now, once you, so at that point, that's, okay, so that's kind of one of your connecting questions for what you sell. What's a good situation question that you use once you're in the home or outside the home to find out kind of what their current situation is? Now, there's several that you ask for your industry as well, but just give give them an example of one. Situation. Um, well, as you know, a lot of people get pain from their bills in the summer. Yeah. So just by asking, how's, how's your bill this month? And they'll answer and then they'll be like, how does it compare to the previous month? And okay. they can see like a difference there. Yeah. So you're asking, okay, walk me through. What are your, what are your, your typical, what is your bill looking like this month? If I, if I could just so I have a better understanding, and what does that compare to, to the last month? Okay. That's good. That's valid. There's some other situation questions you have to ask for your space, but we don't have time to go through this now. What's a good problem awareness question that we've taught you how to ask for your space as well to help them see what problems they have oh i i, I get a good reaction when i ask um so ha have you ever considered what your bill will look like in three to five years how much money is actually going out of your pocket to pay electricity yeah, yeah, I'd relanguage that a little bit if if I were you, just to kind of give you some advice. I know you're already doing well, but if you relanguage that a little bit, and that's probably more of a consequence question that I would ask. You know, like you know, what? Okay, but what happens if you don't do anything about this, and you know, your utility company keeps raising the you know your your rates another five six percent every year, like they have for the last thirty years. And now you're retired living on social security and you can't afford the bill. Like what happens then? See that we're getting them to think a little bit far out, right? Um, okay, so problem awareness, let's go to solution awareness question. What's a good solution awareness question we've taught you how to ask and what does it do with the prospect? Solution. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's kind of hard because at the doors, there's no real like, uh, I guess, sequence to follow because it can go all over the place. Mm. So good. So let me give you an example for your industry. Yeah. So, okay, so before we, before, you know, I came over to your, your house, were you out there looking for, for ways to really reduce your, your bill? So you didn't have to pay so much or, or what were you doing about really trying to reduce your, 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 your electricity? It's a good question. Cause then you find out what they try to do in the past. All right. And then another good solution awareness question for your space. We train tons of people in your space too is okay. Besides, besides you just, you know, saving, cause you're not going to save a ton. I mean, you're only going to save maybe 70, 80, $90 a month right now. I mean, that's only like a thousand dollars a year or something besides just the, the basic savings, you downplay the savings. Cause they're like, what? That's a lot of money. When you downplay it, they do the opposite. If I'm like, Oh, well, uh, you're going to save so much money. It's going to be $80 a month. They'll actually like, well, that's not that much. But if I downplay it, well, besides saving the the the, the money, because I mean, you're really only going to save going solar. You're only going to save maybe 70, 80, 90 bucks a month uh, right now. So I'm only talking like a thousand dollars a year. But besides just saving that money, how do you see solar benefiting you the most, though? Well, I think it would benefit us because of this and because of that. Then they give themselves more reasons and they build a gap that becomes much bigger on why they need to change now, not later. You see the difference? Yeah, like, downplaying helps out a lot. It, yeah, I, for sure. I found that in my industry, at least, it also helps build uh, trust. Yeah, but, well, it does for any industry. When yeah. you downplay it, they have more trust in you and it causes them to be like, no, that's a lot of money I'm saving or, oh my gosh, that's really good. And it just, they pull you in even more. Now, what's a good consequence? There's a lot more solution awareness questions you have to ask for your industry as well. But like I said, we don't have time. Um, what's a good consequence question that we've taught you to ask? Consequence. Um, trying to think here because I'm really blanking out. It's all right. Well, because I, 
again, like the the one I mentioned about not doing anything, um, yeah. that's pretty much a consequence question. It is. It's a form. Yeah. So one good thing that you can do for your industry, because typically in problem awareness, you're you're you know in in situation questions, you know, you're helping them bring up that the rates keep going up five, six, seven percent every year, yeah. every single year, right? And a lot of times people don't even think about that. And you ask them like, you know, how they feel about not having that choice to, if they let the electric company raise the rates or not, right? Which people don't like that because they don't, they don't like that they don't have a choice, right? They just have to pay it or they don't have power. So typically, typically let's say that they're, I'll just give an example. Let's say that they're, I don't know, let's say they're 50 years. Well, let's, because they're basically with what you sell, I don't know what type of program you're selling, but a lot of the salespeople we train in your industry, they sell like after 25 years, their power is pretty much paid off and then they don't have a bill. Is that what you're doing as well? Well, there's different financing options, but that's, that's like, I would say the most popular one. Um, so, okay, but what, so let's say that, you know, in, in 20 years, 25 years, they're going to be retired. So let's say they're like 45 right now, and you know they're going to be retired in 25 years living off Social Security. So obviously they are they have less income, but their bill is going to keep going up every single month, right? It's not like their Social Security is just going to keep going up. Mm -hmm. So so Melinda, what, what happens if you don't do anything about this? And, you know, PMG keeps raising the rates 5% every year for the next 25 years like they always have. And now you're on social security, but they keep raising the rates every month. Like, how would you then be able to pay the bill? That's a consequence question. See what I mean? Now, how do they react when you ask the consequence question? They kind of, they don't, they stay quiet for a little bit, but you can see it in their eyes. They're thinking about it. Yeah. And that's what you want. You want them to think deeper. So that brings out more of their emotional state or it, 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 it brings out their emotional drivers. That's what I mean by that. Okay. And that builds that gap from where they are compared to where they're now seeing that they could be once this newfound problem that they didn't even know they had before you knocked on the door was solved. Right. Okay, we don't have time to go through the presentation and how we teach you how to do that. But what's one good commitment question? Commitment. Um, you know, I've been using one a lot. It's it's kind of a commitment, but then it's also like a consequence mm -hmm. where it says, uh, especially when they're kind of not really happy with financing, mm -hmm. uh, they see it as debt. So it's more of a... Uh, it's all how you position. What, yeah. How you well, what type of agreement do you currently have with a company that allows them to raise the rates anytime they want? Yeah, it just really depends on like if you want to stay with the utility company and they just keep raising the rates without you having a choice. Or it, it's kind of like, you know, what's the reason why you you bought the home here? Yeah, because you want to you want to pay it off in 30 years. That's typically why people go solar. And that's typically why people buy a house rather than renting, because after 30 years, if you're renting, what keeps happening every month? Yeah, you have to keep paying the rent. But when you buy a home after 30 years, what happens? Yeah, you have it paid off. So you don't have the debt, right? Like you have the debt with the utility company every month. So the reason why so many people go solar with us is because after that 25 years, besides the little money they save each month, the 70, 80 bucks a month that they save, after 25 years, when they're on a limited income, do you, you know, they don't want to keep paying the utility bill because it's gone up by 5% for 20 straight years. So if it goes up 5% and you get your calculator out, so if it only, let's say it only goes up 5%, how much are you paying per month now? 250. So if it only goes 5% every year for the next 25 years, that's going to be, and you repeat out actually what the bill is, which is probably going to be what? Three times as much, right? And they're like, holy crap. So that's why, like after the 25 years, instead of you having to, to pay this per month when you're on Social Security, because is the, is the government going to increase your money? Right, exactly. So instead of paying this, you're going to pay how much? Zero. So it depends on if you want to, you know, keep renting and paying for your utilities 
or if you want to be like the homeowner who buys the house and pays it off and then once it's paid off never has to pay it again what i mean what type of result do you want so when you ask those type of questions they get in internally in themselves they're like oh my gosh yeah it's a no-brainer why would i want to keep paying for my utilities i won't even be able to afford that when i retire see the difference there joseph does a real good one where he throws out the full amount and he's like your 401k minus this yeah and what do they do they just start thinking because i mean it, it's pretty much either they're negative in their 401k or close to it yeah it's negative well hey uh, jose any last words of advice you'd give to anybody maybe they're a brand new salesperson looking to get skills to be able to you know get into a good job and really sell from get-go so they don't get fired and make money or even a veteran salesperson like you was that you know you were doing decent making seven or eight grand a month uh before you switched industries any any words of advice you'd give to the vet or the newbie yeah don't be afraid to invest in yourself that's the best you can do and it's a tax write-off so well double win <laughs> who cares about the tax write-off good lord i mean that's i guess it is but where would you be right now without getting into advanced 3.0 i would have had to look for another job why is that because i i wasn't making ends meet with that money i had some money saved up but yeah i mean because yeah, who wants to go out and work 40 50 60 hours a week and not make very much money if you're going to go out and work out 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week why not make three times what you are now or five times what you are doing now you're you're putting in the hours right all right Jose, thanks for being on. Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below, join us, and we're gonna help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.